In fact, the tobacco plant is from the same family as the tomato, pepper, potato and petunia. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. But perhaps we better just stick to tobacco for the moment. The world's annual tobacco production comes from five main growing areas, which produce the three types of tobacco plant. Virginia, Burley and Oriental. Virginia is still grown in Virginia and other parts of North America. Also in Africa, the Far East and South America. Burley is a North American variety also, grown mainly in Kentucky and Tennessee. Oriental tobacco is grown in Greece, Turkey, the Middle East and some parts of Asia. Tobacco seeds are extremely small, with approximately 300,000 seeds per ounce. They look very similar to your morning coffee powder, and we do a similar thing with them. That is, we mix them with water in order to spread them on open-air seed beds. Some six weeks after seeding, the young plants are strong enough to be planted in the fields for full cultivation the plant flowers and the seed head is topped or removed so that the leaves can develop fully. A Virginia plant grows to two meters in height. Its leaves are broad and light in color. They're picked selectively in stages starting from the bottom upwards during the ripening process. Burley has darker leaves which are harvested by the whole plant. The oriental plant has a different character, due to the stonier soil of the regions in which it's cultivated. It reaches only about one meter in height and has leaves of a smaller and more delicate nature, highly prized for their subtle and distinctive flavor. They too are picked selectively to allow full ripening of each leaf. The tobacco plant is perishable and 90% of its leaf weight is made up of water. The only way to preserve it after harvesting is to dry it by the method known as curing, either by flu, air, sun or fire curing. In flu curing, the leaf is hung in specially designed barns heated by carefully controlled fires outside the barn which supply heat to iron flues inside. This stops the fires contaminating the leaf. Moisture from the leaf escapes through vents. Flu curing takes five to eight days, producing a bright yellow leaf with a mellow smoking flavor. Air curing is possibly the oldest method, using open-sided barns that control the flow of air. It takes six to twelve weeks, depending upon the climatic conditions of the country using the process. Air cured tobacco is often referred to as light, medium or dark air cured. The color and flavor of the cured leaf is determined by the time taken to cure it. Leaf cured quickly will be light brown, while leaf cured slowly will be dark and full in flavor. Sun curing requires long periods of sunshine. The leaf is first stored in dark, cool sheds until yellow, then hung on drying racks in the sun for four to six weeks. The cured leaf is light brown. In a fire curing barn, leaf is dried over open fires of specially selected wood or sawdust for about 13 weeks to produce a very dark leaf with a distinctive smoky flavor. Fire cured leaves are often fermented after curing to reduce the harshness of taste produced by this process. Virginia is traditionally flu cured. Burley is mostly air cured. Oriental is normally sun cured. The cured crop is then sorted according to length of leaf, color quality and grade 
and taken to market to meet the first important customers in the long process of becoming cigarettes, the tobacco buyers. Buyers from the world's major manufacturers meet at tobacco auctions where they begin to make a close inspection of the crops on offer. Then the auction proceeds. Once bought, Virginia and Burley leaves go to a cleaning and classifying unit where leaves are stripped from their stems. Oriental tobacco, having a more delicate leaf and small stem, is never separated. The leaf and stems are then shipped to bonded warehouses until fully matured, up to two years later. During this maturing period, shipment samples are held by manufacturers so buyers can check their progress and decide blend recipes for their various brands. They hold two years reserve supply of leaf in order to preserve blend flavor across many harvests. Like any crop, tobacco can suffer from Mother Nature's unpredictability. Harvests can sometimes prove to be below standard or even fail altogether. And smokers would soon detect if the taste of their favorite cigarette was to alter. So the blender's art is in knowing precisely what tobaccos to buy and how to process and blend the wide variety of leaf flavor into a distinctive brand taste, which they keep constant over many years in cigarettes that are freshly produced day by day. Blend recipes are closely guarded secrets. They're transmitted in code between the buyers and their factories. All cigarettes are made from blends of 20 or so grades or type of leaf spread over perhaps three crop years. It's by blending leaves from different crop years that any variability in flavor is evened out. Flavor can also be affected by the addition of two other main ingredients known as casings and flavorings. Their difference being the type of ingredients used and the proportions in which they're applied. Casings include many confectionery type ingredients such as cocoa, licorice and sugar, which are applied in significant amounts to achieve particular tastes. Flavorings are applied in much more subtle proportions. They are compounded from hundreds of ingredients in much the same way as perfumes, using mostly natural oils from flowers or fruits. Another popular method is the addition of menthol to give the effect of coolness to the palate during smoking. Menthol is sometimes added directly to the tobacco during processing, but its effect can also be achieved by applying it not to the tobacco, but to the foil wrapping of the packet. So, there you have the range of possibilities from which the variety of individual brand tastes and flavors can be created. Three different varieties of tobacco, Virginia, Burley, Oriental, four methods of curing, blending options among the three tobacco types and different grades of leaf, and the addition of some other flavor to suit a particular preference. The variety of tobacco tastes traditionally enjoyed in different parts of the world have led to very particular and diverse taste preferences in cigarettes. It can seem very confusing, particularly at the heart of the manufacturing process an advanced control system delivers the correct blend and amounts of tobacco to the machines. It's very highly developed technology. Cut tobacco passes through an airlock before entering the machinery. Once there, it's automatically combed by rollers before being spread smoothly onto a belt system. It's then sucked by air current to form a continuous cigarette-sized rod of tobacco. The paper is dispensed simultaneously from a narrow roller under the monitoring eyes of photoelectric cells which look for defects or tears. 
The brand name is printed at precise intervals. Then, at a speed faster than the human eye can follow, the paper wraps around the tobacco and is glued. The continuous length of cigarette is then cut into 8,000 individual lengths per minute, which proceed to the filter tipping section. Double length filters are fed between each pair and tipping paper fuses them into a double length cigarette. But only for a fraction of a second because cutters immediately halve it into two complete filter tipped cigarettes. At this stage, samples are laboratory tested for consistency of weight, length, moisture content, appearance, and stability of the ends. Filter tips and tobacco undergo draw resistance tests and the paper is checked for burning time. Further tests for taste and chemical analysis ensure complete consistency for the product throughout every day's production, year in, year out. Meanwhile, cigarettes flow continuously to an overhead conveyor and to a reservoir named Oscar from where they descend to hoppers, which feed them into the packaging unit. Here they are wrapped in foil, the packet automatically formed around them, and glued into shape. The final cellophane wrapping seals the pack airtight. The packs can now move into the world of the smoker.